Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome. Welcome. We are so grateful. We are so thankful once again to have this uh, opportunity to share with you the word of the Lord. It's an opportunity. It's a privilege that God has accorded me to share the word of the Lord that he has deposited in my heart with every one of you that is listening, that is watching. And I pray that God will touch your heart and uh, give you an understanding and let's start with a lot of prayer. Let's bow our heads and pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I would like to thank you for this yet another chance, opportunity of given unto us to share the word of the Lord. Dear God, to approach the throne of grace, that Father, we may find grace and mercy to help in the time of need. Dear Father, even as the Bible say, that men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God shall men live. Dear Father, I thank you for these words that you have given us to feed us. Dear Lord, in due season, dear Father, I pray for my viewers, for my listeners, dear God, you minister to them that these words will be impacted with the Holy Spirit, with the power from on high. Dear God, to bless their lives in Jesus' mighty name I do pray. Amen and amen. Welcome once again. We are so grateful. We are so thankful uh, to the Lord for having given us uh, this uh, chance and this opportunity again to uh, share the word of the Lord and I want to uh, say take uh, your Bible, your notebook, your pen and your, 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 your pencil and let us go through the word of the Lord and uh, let us talk about the goodness of the Lord, let us talk about his word and God will establish us and God will help us to continue uh, to be steadfast. The Bible says be steadfast unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord in the book of First uh, uh, Corinthians, the 15th chapter, and first number 58. Uh, that is the prayer of every preacher man. Uh, that is the prayer of every uh, servant of the Lord. When he is uh, teaching the word of the Lord is that the saints of God may be grounded, may be steadfast. Uh, so the Bible says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast and movable because uh, as we near the return of Jesus Christ, there will be a lot of shaking, there will be a lot of uh, uh, trials and tribulations that can easily remove a child of God from the faith, remove a child of God from him that called him. And that is why we keep on teaching the word of the Lord. Therefore, my beloved uh, brethren, be steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. And that is uh, a first of scripture like here in the book of John, the sixth chapter. Jesus had a lot of disciples, a lot of followers, uh, individuals that has, had ascribed their faith on Jesus Christ. And uh, these, uh, a time came, a message was preached. Uh, Jesus explained a line of thought that many of them were not able to bear. And the Bible is saying from that time, uh, in the book of John, the sixth chapter, and verse number 66, uh, the Bible says, and uh, from that time, and from that time, many of his disciples went back 
and walked no more with him. There was that time of shaking among the disciples of Jesus Christ. And this shaking came when he preached the truth, when he told them that he was the bread of life. He was the bread that came from heaven. And men had to uh, believe in his doctrine. Men had to imbibe what he was teaching in their hearts. And they thought that this was a hard saying. The Bible says, many say this is a hard saying. Who can even believe it? Uh, they, 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 though they were followers of Jesus Christ, though are the people that were continually uh, following Jesus Christ, verse number 60, the Bible says, many therefore of his disciples, many therefore of his disciples, when they had, they had this, said, this is a hard saying. Who can hear it? That is a time uh, that a child of God that have followed Jesus Christ uh, through the years, the church, through the years, has been in the faith through the years. A statement is made by the preacher man. A statement is made uh, through the word of God and it becomes again a hard thing for them to hear, a hard thing for them to understand. And here that is why I'm praying that Paul is saying be steadfast and movable. Why? Because there are chances it may not be even being the storms of life. It could be a message be expounded by a man of God in the church and somebody that was uh, in the church and as it were, they were faithful. Then that statement is made and they said, and many there are four of his disciples when they had this thing, they, they said, this is an hard say. Who can even hear it? And verse number 66 now, the Bible is saying, and from that time, after the preaching of the truth, of the exposition of the word of God, and that is why a child of God should always be prayerful for God to keep them. A man of God is always prayerful to preserve God's people, uh, to be unmovable. And because at this point, you'll find there are some people that are following Jesus Christ, but maybe they were, it was out of convenience. Uh, what Jesus was preaching, as long as he was preaching something that they wanted to hear and something that was not uh, pricking their hearts, uh, they were okay with the church. They, they were okay following Jesus Christ. As long as he was preaching something that was convenient and feeding to their ego. Uh, so you find there are many people who go to the church house and even ascribe to the, to the discipleship of Jesus Christ. But as long as uh, the preacher doesn't visit their backyard, as long as the man of God doesn't use the word of God uh, to, 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 trim, to, to trim them, to trim them and, uh, and to, put, uh, uh, to put limits and boundaries that they cannot go beyond. And here that is what was happening. Many, Jesus had many that were following him. And the Bible is saying now from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Uh, they, 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 lost, they lost their steadfastness. They fell. Uh, from their steadfastness. And that is why as a child of God you have that prayer. You have that desire. It, it can only, it cannot, sometimes it's not even somebody else saying anything. But it is the truth being preached. And that pre truth preaches pre pre an individual's heart. And they lose their confidence. They lose their trust in the Lord. And the Bible is saying, and from that time many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then, verse number 67, then Jesus said, say, then said Jesus unto the twelve, will you also go away? Now, I would like you to note here that God will never force anybody uh, to follow him. Uh, God has to let you, Jesus will have to let you to make your own decision whether you are going to follow the truth or not, it cannot be that you are supposed to follow Christ by force. But Jesus submitted this question to the twelve. So that now it can now come from their mouth. That indeed they are going to follow Jesus Christ. You have to, salvation is a personal decision. Uh, following the truth is a personal decision. You have to make sure that it is your choice uh, nobody coerced you nobody uh, made you to you are not compelled to follow the truth and Jesus now wanted to make it uh, plain and clear to them that were, were remaining the 12 brethren and said I want you also to make your personal decisions uh, I want you to make your personal decision uh, so that now you can make a choice because the last many of them have left but the 12 has remained but Jesus said, I have to 
submit this question to you so that you don't say we didn't make somebody made the decision for us no they had to make and the bible say when he asked them the question will you also go away i like the answer that they gave in verse number 68 and the bible says and then simeon peter answered him lord to whom shall we go now they had made now this is a personal decision uh, this is something that they are making uh, from their heart uh, led by Peter who was their spokesperson uh, they have to make a decision they have to make a, uh, their personal quality informed decision uh, that they are going to follow Jesus Christ and say to whom shall we go to for thou hast the words of eternal life in other words it is like a first scripture like here uh, in the book of uh, Psalms the 84th chapter and verse number 10 and the Bible is saying for a day in the courts for that for a day in thy courts is better than a thousand this is a child of god making their personal decision after they evaluate the the, the benefits of being in the house of the lord after and, and, and another of being outside the church uh, they they made their own decisions and like the disciples they knew our following Jesus Christ had opportunity or the chances of having eternal life than being outside the church. And so that is why they say, to where, will, to whom are we going go to, to go to? And the Bible says, for a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. This is a child of God. And he said, and I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my god here is a child of god well informed child of god uh, well uh, he knows how god works uh, and, and and he said uh, i would rather even be a doorkeeper not even in the main uh, sitting arrangement in the house of god he said even if it's to be at the doorpost even if it's to be at the point where uh, everybody coming in and going out i'm the first person they are seeing and i'm the last person they are seeing uh, then i would rather be there because i know the benefits now as the psalmist when he was uh, uh, quoting this first of scripture uh, and saying that he wanted to he would rather be a doorkeeper uh, he was referring to the, uh, the, the, the teaching that was in the word of God. But God has spoken to the children of Israel about servants. Uh, he would like you to note he is not referring uh, to the doorkeeper. Because there were two types of doorkeepers uh, in the house of God. Uh, but I would like to talk about the one that the psalmist is talking about like here. It is alluding to a servant in the book of exodus we'll come back to the book of psalms in the book of exodus the 21st chapter and verse number five and if the servant shall plainly say i have my i love my master and my wife uh, uh, maybe we can get it from the book of deuteronomy let me we'll come back to there but deuteronomy the 15th chapter and verse number 12 then we'll come to the book of exodus the bible say if thy brother and a hebrew man or an Hebrew woman be sold unto thee and serve thee six years. Thee, six years. This, this is your a brother, a child of God, an individual that is of an Israelite, a Hebrew, uh, that serves you for, seven, for six years. Then in the seventh year, thou shalt let him go free from thee. Now I'm following the word, the doorkeeper. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God. And I'm telling you, and I'm showing you what was the psalmist alluding to. What was he referring to? This is what he was referring to. Uh, the children of Israel, they were hireling servants. And these servants were supposed to serve them for six years. And the seventh year was called the, the year of release. And the servants that were serving in your house, you being their master, on the seventh year, you are supposed to let them go. And you give them first number 13 the Bible is saying and when thou shalt thou sendest him out free from thee thou shalt not let him go away empty you as the master you are supposed to give him as some as some 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 food and some virtues and everything that he needed uh, as he lives out to your house first number 14 thou shalt furnish him liberally out of thy frock and out of thy floor and out of thy winepress of that wherewith the Lord thy God has blessed thee, thou shalt give unto him. Now, when these men have served you uh, for six years, on the seventh year, you set him free. 
and you don't send him away empty. This was the instruction from the Almighty God. Uh, verse number 15, you give him according to what the God has blessed you, and thou shalt remember that thou was also a born man in the land of Egypt, and the Lord thy God redeemed thee there, and he is reminding them that when you left Egypt, God made sure you didn't leave Egypt empty. When you were leaving Egypt, God gave you favor with the Egyptians that whatever you needed, the silver and the gold, and everything that you needed that was precious, they gave you because God gave you favor. Now, that he is saying, now remember, you are also a born man. You are also a servant. You are also in bondage in Egypt. And when the time came, your year of release, you never left empty. Now, God is saying, now when these people are leaving, they should not leave empty. Because remember, you had the experience. And so he said, he said therefore, I command thee this thing today first number 16 now it shall come to pass now that is where we are finding now that name the word the reason of the doorkeeper and it shall come to pass if he says unto thee it is the time for him to be released and you give him it has to be jesus said will you also go away because you have to make your personal choice and these servant that have served you for seven, for six years you give him a chance to make his personal choice that he goes he is free to go and but he doesn't go away empty if he says unto thee i will not go away to whom shall we go to i will not go away from thee because he loved thee he loveth thee and thine house and because he is well with thee now that is i want you to relate that with jesus christ from that time, many of the disciples walked no more with him. They went back, but he turned to the twelve, and he said, will you also? Like that man, on the seventh year, the beginning of the seventh year, he is told, this is your year of release, and you have to go to your people. I'll give you everything that you need, uh, according to the way God has also blessed me. But he says, and if he says unto thee, I will not go away from thee, because he loveth thee and thine house. They loved Jesus Christ. They loved, the twelve loved Jesus Christ. They loved the work of the ministry. And they knew that he had the word of life. When they were with Jesus Christ, they were safer. They had more opportunities. Uh, they were guaranteed of their provisions. Because he loveth thee and thine house, and because he is well with thee, there is eternal life. There is provision. First number 17, the Bible says, then, now this is where it is, then thou shalt take a nail. It was a peg. And that peg, this master, will take the servant that I've said, I'm not going to go. And thrash it in through his ear unto the door. He was to go thrash and and put a peg on on his ears as he has pierced the ears he has to pierce the ear and put a peg like there and this had to be attached to the door so that and he shall be thy servant forever now this is what the psalmist is referring to when he is saying i would rather be a doorkeeper a doorkeeper as a servant a doorkeeper because he values and he loveth the master he is given an opportunity to leave i would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the lord even if it is for one day than being in the tent of the wicked for the rest of my life and that is what we are talking about when we are talking about a doorkeeper it is like that brother that sister that has given themselves to the work of god to the service of the work of god when these servant is given an opportunity to leave and stop serving their master on the seventh year after serving them for six years then he says i am far better being a servant in your house than being outside there why because there is provision i am better when i'm here than when i'm out you may be a servant in the house of god but he's saying it is far better he said you'll take a nail and pierce you take a peg and pierce his ears and you attach that to the door showing that is a way of servanthood and he shall serve shall be thy servant forever and also unto thy maid servants 
thou shalt do likewise. That means this serving, this being the doorkeeper is different from the priests. Because we also had the priests that were doorkeepers in the house of God. Now remember this servant is in his master's house. A doorkeeper in his master's house. But the, we used to have uh, the, 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 the priest in the book of uh, 2 Kings, the 12th chapter and verse number 9. He says, uh, and Jehoiada, the priest, took a chest and bowed a hole in the lid of it and set it beside the altar. And on the light side of the one cometh into his house of, into the, into the house of the Lord. And the priest, now this is the word, and the priest that kept the door. I would rather be a doorkeeper. Now there are two kinds of doorkeepers. This is a priest that was a doorkeeper in the house of God. And this time, this is a prestigious. Something that was uh, honorable. Because when they were there, their duty was to receive money. And the priest that kept the door put therein all the money that was brought into the house of the Lord. So this kind of a doorkeeper, their duty was, it was a respectable, prestigious position for a priest. This was not a servant. It was a priest and his duty was to receive money when God's people were coming to church. Again, uh, uh, Second Kings, uh, the 22nd chapter, uh, showing you this kind, another kind of a doorkeeper. That is of a priest, uh, Second Kings, the 22nd chapter and verse number 4. And the Bible says, go, go up to Helkir, the high, uh, the high uh, priest, and he may... That he may sum the silver which is brought into the house of the Lord, which the keepers of the door, which the keepers of the door have gathered of the people. Now that is another kind I'm showing you. So the psalmist is not referring to this. When he is saying, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord, he is not referring at this prestigious position of receiving offerings and receiving money as God's people comes in. But he is referring to the doorkeeper that was a servant that had served for six years. And on the seventh year, he has given an opportunity to leave. But he is saying, to whom shall I go to? I cannot leave because you, when I am with you, I am better off. When I am in the house of God, though I remain a servant, though I remain a doorkeeper, but I'm better off than being outside there. This is a child of God that have served God. This is an individual that knows the privileges that, are comes, that comes by serving God or in serving God. And he said, I would rather be a doorkeeper. So in the book of Exodus where we were, we were in the book of Exodus, the 21st chapter and verse number 5. The Bible is saying, and if the servant shall say plainly, plainly, it has to come from the servant. It is not supposed to be imposed on them. They are not supposed to be compelled. Jesus turned to the twelve and said, Will you make your own personal decision? Will you also go away? And every one of us will be given an opportunity to leave the church. Every one of us will be given an opportunity to surrender our servanthood to God. Them that have served God. At time, once in a while, an opportunity will come and you'll be given and said, plainly, say, will you also go away? And they said, where shall I go? Because you have the word of life. And if the servant shall say, plainly, I love my master. I love God. I love that name, the name of Jesus. I love to hear his voice so plain. So I want to keep on coming. And he said, even if I don't sing in the choir, even if I am not in the Levites group, even if I am not serving in any other position but at the door, the Bible is saying, I love my master. I love my wife. I love my children. You cannot get out of the church because of the value it is adding to your family. Brother, you know that that is what the, the servant is saying. Because of me being a servant in your house, my life, wife's life is better. My children's life is better. Because of serving in the house of God. Because of the years, the six years, the servant is saying, the six years that I have served in your house, telling the master, my family has been better. My family, there have been peace. 
There have been provision. There have been every sufficiency in whatever we want by me serving in their house. And that is what a child of God is saying. Since the time God added me to the church and I started serving God, I realized that my life is better and my family is better. My, my business is, is better. And then even me, I am better. That is why I love my master. Question, do you love your master? Do you love God enough? Do you love Jesus? They are saying, to whom shall we go to? And we have found out you have the words of eternal life. That is what the scripture is saying. And if the, if the servant say plainly, I love my master. And because of that, my life, I love my wife and my children. He said, I will not go out free. You have given me the liberty to choose to leave the church. Will you also go away? You have given me the liberty after serving you for six years to leave. But he is saying, then verse number six, the Bible is saying, then his master... I would rather be a doorkeeper. He said, he, then his master shall bring him unto the judges, the witnesses, people that are there and to testify that indeed it was his personal choice. He was not compelled. He was not forced to. But everybody to hear him saying, I am not going out. But we are giving you the provisions. We are giving you from my flock. I'm giving you some sheep and some camels. And I'm giving you everything you need. But he said, no, I don't want to go. Though it is free. Then he will be brought before the judges. He shall also bring him to the door. Now, that is the door. I would rather be a doorkeeper. That means an all unto the doorpost. Praise the name of the Lord. That is what we are talking about when you had, and I know many have said and have even sung that song saying that I would, uh, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than being in the camp of the wicked. They, this means you must be a servant. And being at the door, it is like you are at the, the, the hedges of the door. The door revolves around you, opening and closing. You are the first person people will see when they come to the church, and you'll be the last person they will see when they are leaving. Because you are always there. When they come in, you're ushering them in, you serve them. And when they go out, you're the one ushering them out. Because you're like now a doorkeeper. You open and shut. You are a servant. When everybody is seated comfortably on their seats, you are, the, you are there at the door. Because you are a door. I would rather be a doorkeeper. I would rather be a servant. Not receiving money like the priest. I'm showing you this now. The psalmist is talking about is a servanthood. Being a doorkeeper means you are a servant. So I, I would rather be a doorkeeper. So that he shall also bring him to the door, all unto the door post. And his master, look at that, shall bow his ear, shall pierce his ear. Your ear will be pierced through. And that opening, that hole that is there, they will put a peg that is supposed to connect you and to fix you to the post or through the door post. That you can never live there. You are always be at the door. When you say I'd rather be a doorkeeper, it means, my brother, you'll never leave the church. You'll be the first person to come because the church, the door is like revolving around you. When the door opens, you have to twist for it to open because your ear is attached to it. You're a servant. And his master shall bow his ear through with an oar, and he shall serve him forever. When you are a doorkeeper, you are not somebody who is wishy washy or somebody who is unreliable, but you are somebody that the pastor, even the priest, or the minister of the gospel know, brother so and so, sister so and so will always be there, and that is why they can even give you the keys of the church or the, the keys of the church building. Because they know you'll be the first person to be there. They know you'll be the last person to be there. Why? You are a doorkeeper. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So he's saying this should be done. A doorkeeper, you're making your personal choice. The psalmist is making his own personal choice. And it's you, the disciples, also, they made their personal choice. 
Will you also go away? He said, to whom shall we go to? For thou hast the word of eternal life. In other words, they're saying, we are better serving you. We are better being with you. Like that servant is saying, my life is better. My wife's life is better. My children's life is better as long as I have been a servant in your house. So I cannot go because if I go, then it means I lose the opportunity, the privileges. I lose the privileges that I have always had when I was a servant, or when I have been a servant. And that is the conviction a child of God has. That is the conviction a child of God. So back to the book of Psalms, the 84th chapter and verse number 10. There now the psalmist is making his own decision. He said, for a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. He said, I had rather be a dog keeper in the house of God. Praise the name of the Lord. I would rather be a dog keeper. Now, that now he is saying a dog keeper now is a servant. I have told you a dog keeper is a servant. When that servant had served the master for six years, and the seventh year he is supposed to be released, the year of release, and he voluntarily said, Me, I'm not going. Why? Because I know the benefits. And I'd like you to note there. And he's saying, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. Now, there are two things like there. One is the house. The other one is the tent. The house of God. A house represents permanency. A house represents continuity. When you're talking of a house, this, this servant is saying, the servant is, uh, the servant is saying, the child of God is saying, the doorkeeper is saying, as long as it's a house, I know I'll be here forever and ever. It is not like a tent that can be pinched today and tomorrow is removed. A tent for a tent, there is no permanency. It is there for a season, but a house is permanent. Praise the name of the Lord. That means that if the house is permanent, then the provision and the benefits that are acquired and are gotten from that house, then you know they are also permanent. The privileges being in the house because it will be there tomorrow. It will be there next week. It will be there next month. It will be there next year. It will be there 10 years from now. And this servant is saying, if I go to a tent, then it means my survival is temporal. Because that tent will be there. And then after five more days, it will be removed and they go to another place. And that is why he is saying, I would rather be in the house. Because the house, there is provisions. In the house, there is satisfaction. In the book of Psalms, the 36th chapter and verse number 8, there is satisfaction in that house. He said, they shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thine house. So this servant is saying, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God. Why? There is provision, there are privileges, and these privileges, they are permanent. And there are many, like, unlike the tent. They, are, they shall be abundantly satisfied. With the fatness of thine house, there will be satisfaction. And thou shalt make them drink of the river of thy pleasure. Uh, 65th a chapter of the book of Psalms, I'm showing you the benefits and the privileges that comes uh, from uh, the house. I would rather be a doorkeeper, I would rather be a servant. Because in that house, there is continuity. There is provision. In that house... I, it is something that I'm going to enjoy. Psalms the 64th chapter and first number, 65th chapter and first number 4. The Bible is saying, Blessed is the man whom thou choosest and causest to approach unto thee, that he may dwell in thy courts, and we shall be satisfied. That is why he's saying, when I have been serving you, my life has been better. My wife's life, my children's life has been better. There have been satisfaction. Now you're telling me to go. No. He said, where shall we go to? 
The disciples said, where can we go to? When you're saying, my brother, you'd rather be a doorkeeper. You're saying you don't have a plan B. You don't have a, 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 an alternative. You're saying, I am better off in the house of the Lord, even if it's being at the door. And my ear is connected and pinched and, 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 and hedged to the door. That showing that I can never go now. I can never leave. Because that door is revolving around this individual. Letting people in and letting people out. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of thine house. Even of thy holy temple. That is a child of God. They can never leave. Again, uh, Psalms the 27th chapter, that is why he is praying. David is praying. Psalms the 27th chapter and verse number 4. One thing have I desired of the Lord. And that will I seek after is that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. Dwell. You are given after the year of six years on the year of release. You are told now you can go. He said, no, I can't go. I would rather be a doorkeeper. I would rather be at the door. I don't want to be in the dining. I don't want to be in the sitting room. I don't want to be in the inner chamber. But I just want to stay in this house in the lowest, most humbling position and place of a servanthood. And that is at the door. Where everybody passing by, they will see me at the door. There was anybody coming in, they will see me at the door. And they will know for sure this is a servant. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. It doesn't matter. I'm reminded of this woman uh, by the name of uh, uh, Anna in the book of Luke, the second chapter. And verse number 35, the Bible is saying, uh, verse number 36. And there was, an, uh, there, there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanio, of the tribe of Asa. She was of a great age. And had lived with her husband seven years from her virginity. She got married and, and, uh, and they stayed for seven years. And the husband died, first number 37. And she was a widow of about four scores and four years. Eighty-four years old. Which departed not from the temple. That is now a doorkeeper. That is a servant. But never which departed not from the temple, but served God with fasting and prayers night and day. I would rather be a doorkeeper. A doorkeeper, my brother, I'm saying again, is a servant. When David is saying, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord, it means it's because there are benefits in the house of God. There are blessings in the house of God. And he said, my family was better, has been better my family and every one of you you can attest to that since god touched you since god brought you to the church and you started serving in your master's house your life has been better your family's life has been better now anybody giving you an opportunity to leave you say no even if i don't have anything else to do inside the house then let me be a doorkeeper if i don't qualify to serve in any other position in the house of my Lord, in the house of my master, then I'm comfortable serving at the door. And I become, I would rather be a doorkeeper. And a doorkeeper, I said, it is this man, this woman, their ears has been pierced. And they are hooked and connected to the door, showing that they will serve forever. They will never leave the church. Praise the name of the Lord. He said, I said, and she served God with fasting she never left at 84 years old hallelujah now that is what we are talking about even a psalmist again said psalms the 20 that chapter it says uh, uh, the last part of it is uh, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life surely goodness and mercy psalms the 20 that chapter and verse number six Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, he said, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now he is saying he will serve forever. 
He will serve uh, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy, the 12th chapter and verse number 17. Is it Deuteronomy that we led? He said, uh, and he will serve you. He said in the book of Deuteronomy, the 15th chapter and verse number 17, the Bible is saying, Then shalt thou take an oar and thrash through his ear unto the door, and he shall be thy servant forever. Forever, where should I? Where will we go? For we have realized you have the word of eternal life, and that is what I'm saying. One day, back again to the book of Psalms, the 84th chapter and verse number 10, he is saying, One he said, He said, One day, for a day in thy court is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. And I said, a tent signifying something that is not permanent. It's something temporal and for a season. You pinch a tent, after four days it is not there. After five days the tent is taken away. You find the ungodly prospering, the wicked prospering, but it is for a season because they are in a tent. They, they, they are in a tent. The Bible is saying in the book of Psalms, the 70, that chapter and verse number 9. The Bible is saying they, they set their verse number 9. I, I want a verse of scripture like their verse number 19 says what? The Bible is saying how they, first number, how are they brought into desolation as in a moment. Though they were successful, though they looked, but remember as a tent. Of the wicked. Verse number three, the same book of Psalms, the 70, that chapter. David is saying, I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Remember, they are, prosper they are, they are prosperous, but they are in a tent. It is not like they are in a house because if they were in a house, their leeches was in the house, then you would say it is permanent. But they are in the camp of the wicked. In the tent of the wicked. Tents of the wicked signifying something that is for a season. It's, temp it's, it's, it's temporal. And David, because he did not know God that time, when he saw the prosperity of the wicked, he was envious. Verse number four. For there are no burns in their death, but their strength is firm, so they seem. And you see that tent and it looks beautiful. And it looks... Uh, attractive but remember it is a tent first number five it is just a tent they are not in trouble as other men and you say me i have suffered in the house of god i have uh, been troubled uh, being in the a servant in the church but remember where they are though it looks as though it is wonderful it is attractive it is beautiful but remember it's a tent it is not a house it doesn't have permanency those blessings are not permanent they look as though they are doing well, driving powerful cars, living in posh houses, and enjoying life. But remember, they all that is in a tent. That is why he's saying, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house than being in the tent. Because what is in the tent, it doesn't have permanency. It is for a season. When these seven is told, now you can go. Then he said, no, going out there, there is no permanency. Going out there, there is a, it is for a moment. First number six. Therefore, pride compassed them about us as a chain. Violence covered them as a garment. First number seven. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart could wish. These are the wicked. But remember, they are in the tents. And I say that tent is a symbol of temporal things. It cannot stay for long. It will be hit by the weather. It will be hit by the sun. It will be hit by the rain. And eventually they will remove the tents. And whatever they had, it fries away. First number eight. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. First number nine, the Bible is saying, they set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue walketh uh, through the earth. These are the ungodly. And David, 
almost felt envious. Not even almost, he felt envious. And he felt like leaving and going to join them. Like the disciples, they saw many of the rest of his disciples walking no more with Jesus. And it seems as though they had a, a prosperous future. And that is why Jesus said, I don't want to coerce you. I don't want to force you. I don't want to compel you to stay. I want you to make your quality decision. Will you also go away? Like that servant, after six years, he said, I want you to go. And you're not going to go empty. I'll give you something. I said, no, we can't go. Verse number 17. The Bible is saying, until. David got confused. He said, until I went. He is talking about the prosperity of the wicked. The tents of the wicked. Until I went into the house of God. Then understood I their end. Look at that. The house has no end. It is forever. I'll be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord forever. But for the tent is for a season. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I their end. He said, I understood their end. It is not, it has an end, but the house has no end. Has no end end the tent is temporal first number 18 and the Bible is saying surely thou didst set them in a sleepy places God though the wicked seems as though they are prosperous but they are in the tents and they are set on sleepy places thou castest them down into destruction and that is why now this psalmist is making a choice he is considering the temporal status of the wicked, the tents. And he said, if I go there, it doesn't have permanency. If I go, I leave my master's house and I go there. Then it means I will enjoy what even I will get from my master for a season because I'm joining a people that are living in tents and their survival is for a season. First number 19. How are, they, how are they brought into desolation? And as in a moment, in a moment. And they are utterly consumed with the terror. These that were, seems as though they were enjoying and everything was working for them. Everything was uh, uh, glorious. Everything was, uh, was powerful and looked beautiful in a tent. And that is why given a choice, the psalmist said, I would rather, even if my master doesn't need me in the inner chamber or in the main house, let me be the doorkeeper. And that is what it all means. I would rather be a servant in the house of God, even if I don't sit on the pews or rather on the dais and I preach the gospel, even if I am not a preacher of the gospel or even I'm not a, a, an elder in the church or a musician in the church, but I cannot leave the church. I cannot leave my master's house to go and join the tent of the wickedness because those tents are for a season. He said, they said, who do we have? Fast number 25. David now after knowing all that he said. Fast number 25. Whom, whom have I in heaven but you? The same thing that the disciples are saying. Will you also go away? They are told. Will you also go away? And they say to whom shall we go to? The psalmist they say. After saying, I would rather be a doorkeeper, he saying, the reason why I want to stay here as a doorkeeper, he says, whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon the earth that, des that I, there, was, there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. In other words, like that servant is saying, where else can I go to? The, 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 the psalmist is saying, where else can I go to? I have tested the goodness of this house. I have been satisfied in this house. I have been blessed in this house. My family has been at peace in this house. Anna said even after losing her husband. He said where else can I go? Let me stay in the church. And for she was 84 years old. 
serving in the church. Because he said, living here, I am going to join the camp of the wicked, or the tent of the wicked, and in the tent there is no permanency. Though they may look as though they are doing okay. Though they may look as though everything is all right, but it is for a moment. It is temporal. But the house... The house of my master. The house of my master. There shall be no end. The other one, their end. Until I went to the house of God and I knew their end. But for this, my master, Jesus Christ, the Bible is saying in the book of, uh, there's a first scripture in the book of Isaiah, the ninth chapter and first number six. Uh, the Bible says a lie there. Uh, for unto us a child is born. And to us, this is our master. This is the one we serve. This is Jesus Christ. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Verse number 7, the scripture says, And of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. There shall be no end. And that is why the disciples are saying, to whom do we go to? You have the word of life. The servant is saying, I cannot go. Because as long as I'm here, my family is better. My wife is better. My children is better. There is peace in my home. There is provision, sufficiency in my home. As long as I remain in this house. And that is the house of God. You may not be a preacher man. You may not be an elder in the church. But even if you are and you are given an opportunity to leave, you say no. Even if there is no more space for me to serve as an elder, to serve as a preacher man, let me be a doorkeeper. And the master will take that servant and pierce through his ear and put a peg light there that is connected to the door that everybody will know this will serve his master, his house, his master's house forever and ever. He will never leave. When we are saying, I'd rather be a doorkeeper, you're saying you have made up your mind. You are like the hedges of the door. The door swings in and out by you. You are the one holding that door. You let people in and you let people out. But means you are the first person to come. And you are the last person to leave when we have church activities. Why? I'm a doorkeeper. I'm a servant. And everybody knows that. That is what the psalmist is saying. Given the opportunity. Why? Because he says that he's a, the house of God have every other provision. And as he continues serving the Lord. He realized there was peace, there was good health, there was bread. Everything that he needed was provided for. In the house of God, that is why he said, even if I don't serve the table, I want to be at the door. That is the prayer of a child of God. The wicked have an end. Then went I into the house of God and consulted with the word of God. And I consulted with the scriptures and I found out they have an end. But for my master's house, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Praise the name of the Lord. And I'm saying there's a difference between a house and a tent. A house is, the, is permanent. That means the healing, the provision. The disciples are saying, where do we go? Question, who are you in the house of God? In your master's house. Are you like them that are waiting to be provoked and they leave? From that time, many of his disciples went and walked no more with him. They went back and said, this is a hard saying. Who can bear it? Or oh, that servant after serving for six years and they were given an opportunity to leave, they left. But I thank God for that other servant who said, me, I cannot go. I don't want to go. Back to the book of uh, Deuteronomy, the 15th chapter, verse number 12. He said, ah, you shall give him an opportunity to go. You must set him free on the seventh year. Verse number 15, verse number 16. You must give him an opportunity and it shall be if he said, question, will you be like that servant 
Will you be like the disciples that when they were told go and they said no. I would rather be a doorkeeper. I would rather be a servant in this house. And if he say unto thee, I will not go away from thee because he loved thee. Do you love God? Do you love the church? Do you love the ministry? But even when you are provoked and you are given an opportunity to leave, you still say, I would rather be a servant. I would rather be the doormat that everybody will come stepping on and dusting their shoes and, and they, as they walk in the church. I would rather be there than, than being in the tents of the wicked. Because the tents is not having permanency. And the provision has an end. What they enjoy in the tent, it is for a season. It has a time limit. I will not go away from thee. Can you say that as a child of God? Give an opportunity. Because he loved God. Because you love God. Where can we go to? For you have the word of life. Because he loved thee and thine house. Do you love the church? Where? How amiable, the scriptures say. How amiable are thy tabernacles, O God. And this is a child of God. They admire, they love where the honor of God dwelleth. They admire uh, the praise where uh, the, the glory of God is. Hey, how amiable are thy uh, tabernacle, O God. He love the praise where the honor of God dwelleth. Praise the name of the Lord. He said, he said, uh, I, I want to lead, I, first of all, I lead, uh, before I go to verse number one I, of the book of Psalms, in the 84th chapter, I lead Psalms, the 26th chapter, and verse number eight. Because he loves the house of God. Lord, I loved the habitation of thine house. I loved. Do you, do, you, do you love the church that much that when you're given an opportunity, you said, I love it. I never need there is no other business for me inside the house. Let me be at the door. Let me be the doorkeeper. Oh Lord, I have loved the habitation of thine house and the place where thine honor dwelleth. The place is the church. Is where the honor of God is, is the sanctuary. And that is why these seven is said, because he loved thee and he loved thine house. You love God and you love the church. You cannot separate the church from God. You cannot separate God from the church. That is why we love this church. We love the, where the honor of God dwelleth. Praise the name of the Lord. How, how, where the honor, uh, the honor dwelleth. That is a, a child of God desiring to spend the rest of their life forever in the house of the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Uh, if they want to stay in the house of the Lord all the days of their lives. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Again, uh, Psalms, uh, Psalms the, uh, the, the 84th chapter, that is where we are. Uh, the Bible is saying, how amiable are thy tabernacles, O God. How amiable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts. You love it. Like that servant we are leading. He said, because I love it. Again, in the book of Deuteronomy, the, 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 the the 15th chapter and first number, uh, uh, first number, uh, the, the Deuteronomy, the 15th chapter and first number 16. First, if he says unto thee, I will not go away from thee. Why? Because he loved, he loved thee and thine house. I love the habitation of thine house. And because he is well, because he is well with thee. Then first number 17, then thou shalt take an oar and thrash it through his ear unto the door, and he shall be thy servant forever. And likewise also, and also unto thy maid servants, thou shalt do likewise. I'm saying, my brother, when we read that first of scripture, now we understand it, that I would rather be, 
Psalms 84th chapter and verse number 10. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God, in the house of my master, than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. Praise the name of the Lord. And that is the prayer of every child of God. Even if there is nothing for me to do in the house of God, even if there is nothing else for me or anything else for me to do as a preacher in the house of God, let me go and sit at the door and I become a doorkeeper in the house of God. But one thing I cannot do and I will not do is to leave the house of God because I am better in the house of God. My family is better when I'm serving in the house of God. And he said, if there, is, if there is nothing else for me to do, let me be a doorkeeper. Let me be a, 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 a servant in the house of God. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. That is the prayer. That is what I wanted to share with you. The importance of the house of God. Even if there is nothing else for you to do. Not even to preach. Not to be an elder. Not to be a singer. And there is nothing else that you can do. Then... Then there's a desire, there's an opportunity for you to serve as a doorkeeper in the house of God, as a servant. Hallelujah. Rather than being, than to dwell in the tents of the wickedness, the tent of the ungodly, because those tents are temporal. And I pray that God would help each and every one of you that is listening to me. But even when you are given an opportunity, you say, no, I have tasted of his goodness. I have tasted of his provision. I have tasted of the privileges that are there in the house of my master, in the house of God, so that I cannot leave, even if what I've been doing all those six years, somebody else is coming to start doing it, let then me be at the door, as long as it's in that house. Or the door of that house. Because my wife, my children, and everything of mine has been better. As when, when I have been serving. So may God bless you my brother. May God keep you. May God preserve you my sister. And give you that consistency. Give you that desire. It is, it is a humbling experience. To be a doorkeeper. But it pays. It pays to serve the Lord. It pays to be a servant because where else can we go? And you have the word of eternal life. Right here, there is eternal life. There is those words that are going to usher us into the kingdom of God, eternal life. So God bless you. God keep you. I pray that God will uphold you and keep you faithful even as you continually serve. And if you are not needed in one department in the church, look for something else to do in the same church. Don't leave and say that they never needed my services or my services are not in it anymore because they, tell you to, they told you to step down as a head usher or a head usher. Right? And you say, I don't need to go to that church again. No, go to the door and become a doorkeeper. Look for something else to do as long as it's in your servant's, your, sorry, your master's house. They server said, even if uh, what I was been doing, serving tables, is uh, being done by somebody else, let me be a doorkeeper. But one thing I'm not going to do is to leave. And God help me, God help you. May God help every one of you to look for every reason to stay a little longer, to stay and to linger long enough in the house of God. All the days of your life. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening and walking with me through the service. And I pray that the Spirit of God will minister to you. I pray that God will give you the understanding. And even when it calls for you to make a decision, God to give you that a quickening, that to make a quality decision. And you'll be like that servant and say, I am not going to go. And you'll be like the disciples said, where to whom shall we go to? Where else can we go to? Because you have the word of life. God bless you. I want to bless you. Lift up your hands and bow your heads and let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the word that you have given us. I pray that God Almighty, even when that time comes and we are called Jehovah Father to make a decision, you help each and every one of us to say it's true. My, whatever I've been doing in the house of God has come to an end and somebody else is doing it. 
but I want to be a doorkeeper. I want to be a servant, serve in another office, serve in another area. As long as I stay in the house of the Lord, for I am better when I am in the house of God. I am better, my family is better when I am in the house of God. And I pray for my listeners, Jehovah God. Them that have been viewing this program, Jehovah God, minister to them. Give to them, Jehovah, that wisdom to make that quality decision to know, dear Father, there is eternal life in the house of God. To know that it is not demeaning to be a doorkeeper, but it is an opportunity to stay in the house of God. Father God, I thank you. I pray that God, you may minister to them. Them that have needs and have desires, dear God, according to their riches in glory in Christ Jesus, minister to them. Grant them, Father, the desires of their hearts. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. God keep you. God preserve you. Looking forward again to see you. And even if I'll find you at the door, being at the doorkeeper, I'll bless God for you because you are a doorkeeper in the house of your God, not in the tent of the wicked. So God bless you, seeing you very soon again. God be with you. Amen.